Greetings from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Stan Jibalisco here, continuing our tutorial in regards to the book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, published by McGraw-Hill, the third edition, in October of 2013. Uh, I have produced several videos, an increasing number of videos, as I do this one, on this book explaining various schematics and how the currents and signals flow through them. The title of that playlist on my YouTube channel is Beginner's Schematics. And again, I'd like to reiterate the assets of the paper uh, bound version of this book, the spiral binding, so it lays flat on your workbench, heavy stock paper, and uh, if you happen to spill your Diet Mountain Dew on it, all it'll get is wet, unlike a tablet computer or tablet device. In addition, I've expounded upon some other advantages of paper-bound books, in my opinion, in another video here on this playlist. Advantages of this book over previous editions include completely redrawn art and uh, edited text, a uh, considerable amount of new stuff, particularly in the back, and little blurbs called Follow the Flow, which in which I explain the way that the currents and signals flow through the circuits. Reviewers had specifically requested that kind of stuff in the new edition, or they regretted that it didn't exist in the previous ones. So, you know, I read, I read your reviews, and if you want to contact me by email, go to my website, sciencewriter.net, and I'll usually answer you, uh, assuming I get your email. Here, though, on page 79, I would like to look at figure 4-20. This uh, circuit shows an oscillator. It's a variant of an oscillator known as a Pierce oscillator, P-I-E-R-C-E, -E, like you would pierce something with a sharp object. The guy's name, I guess, who designed this, or the gal, is Pierce. Anyway, this is a hybrid block schematic diagram, just like the one above it of a crystal-controlled low-power radio transmitter. Following this oscillator is a buffer and then an amplifier. But I'd like to draw this oscillator circuit for you. And then as I draw it, I will explain how the currents and signals flow through it. It uses an N-channel junction field effect transistor. There is the source, the gate, and the drain. Source, gate, drain. Now connected to the output, before we go any further, can, or pardon me, connected to the drain power supply line is a telegraph key. And in this case it happens to be 12 volts. When you open that key, you cut off the power to the whole system so that you don't get any signal at all. It, it can't produce power or can't produce a signal without power. The source goes through a resistor to chassis ground. Now, the drain of this device also goes through a capacitor. Now this diagram isn't exactly configured the same geometrical identical pattern as figure 4-20, but it, the circuit components are exactly the same in terms of their arrangements. This is a capacitor. This is a quartz crystal. I don't know if you're old enough to remember the days when ham radio operators, uh, when they first got licensed with their novice class license, they had to control their transmitters with one of these things. It's a little, uh, a little thing, maybe about the size of oh, it was about the size of this here, the the cap off of this medicine bottle, about a 
but it was not quite shaped the same way and it had two little pins and you plugged it into your transmitter. Well this crystal goes around through a resistor to ground like this. So when you close the key what you get here is a situation where you can have feedback from the crystal and I'll explain that in a minute. Another capacitor right here provides a feedback circuit from the output to the input or what would be the output generally. Now what you normally do in an oscillator like this is you take your output from here from the source or emitter rather than from the drain or collector of the device and usually you would want to have a blocking capacitor there to prevent the DC bias from affecting the following stage. In figure 4-20 that capacitor is not shown. I, it's, uh, it's actually in the buffer circuit shown in figure 4-19. So this is the capacitor that prevents interaction or prevents uh, bias interaction and yet will still allow the signal to go through. The reason that you take the output from the source, the source here is that it is a lot less likely to load down the oscillator and make it stop oscillating when you close the or not oscillate at all, not start at all, or spontaneously stop if you load down the output, if you take it from the drain or from the collector. That's why most oscillators, well-designed ones, you will see the output taken from there. Well, of course, we need to get some bias to this, to this device to make it work, and we do that with another resistor like that. And then we provide a capacitor here which helps to ensure that we don't get signal blowback or, ne or negative feedback that could interfere with the performance of the device. So the current, the electron current flows from chassis ground into the source and out the drain. Then once this thing starts oscillating because of this feedback here, you close the key, this thing should start oscillating right away. That in effect produces an RF carrier signal that can get through this blocking capacitor and go on to the buffer. So the key to this whole thing right here this crystal, a quartz crystal, is a little bit like an LC tuned circuit. A little bit like this. That's a, a quartz crystal has a specific resonant frequency. When you place a, a stress current on it, the little piece of quartz, which is typically oh, less than a millimeter thick, it, the thicker it is, the lower the frequency at which it will oscillate by means of something called the piezo, piezoelectric effect. In fact, what's happening inside that crystal is little acoustic waves are propagating back and forth between the faces of this piece of quartz. But because the speed of sound is so much higher in a solid like quartz, because of the properties of the quartz, it can actually produce a fluctuating signal or current that will produce the output that you need in order to continue on, buffer the output, and then amplify it. And you can build a complete little ham radio transmitter this way. I remember I built an oscillator like this once, all by itself. Just like this, no amplifier, no nothing, and I connected the antenna right there. 
This was back when I was a kid. And I had a ham radio guru who served as my mentor in ham radio jargon. That's known as an Elmer. Elmer, E-L-M-E-R. His name wasn't really Elmer, though. His name was uh, Bill. Bill. Bill Hornseth, W-0-G-L-E. I actually remember his call letters. He had a swan uh, brand radio and a trap vertical in his backyard in Rochester, Minnesota, and he worked the world with that. I believe it was called a Swan 350 or something like that. Are you old enough to remember those? Anyway, I asked him to listen for me, and I set this up on 40 meters, the 40-meter ham band at 7.185 megahertz. That was the Morse code band for novices at that time, and I asked him to listen for me. And he heard me, too. He heard me across town using just this little thing and my little 40-meter dipole antenna. Just a story there for you, but that's how this sort of a circuit works. The key is the piezoelectric effect. This crystal resonates in there. It's a physical resonance, just like sound waves can resonate inside a little sound cavity, like the kind you might have in your stereo speakers. You generally don't want those in your stereo speakers because they'll make the sound all goofy. But you do want them in a quartz crystal. So that is a, my best attempt at explaining how that little thing works. And you can look through this book, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, and look at and enjoy all of the little follow-the-flow blurbs. And if you have any suggestions for improvements to this book, please send me an email. Once again, you can go to my website, sciencewriter.net, and hit the mailbox and follow the little directions and shoot me something. Just be nice to me, will you please? Stan Jibalisco, signing off. From the Black Hills, soon to be white and soon to be very, very cold. In Dakota Territory, United States of America. So long.